Hello YouTube, this is Dickel Square here with lesson 3 of uh, Basic Beginner Lua Tutorials and today I've got something for you here so if I run the script it's gonna say enter something and if I enter something, now at first at first glance this may seem, this may look a lot like that um, that script at the beginning of lesson 2 but there is something different now if I type in anything like fudge that's not how you spell fudge, fudge hang on a second, let me just restart. Blah. Okay, if I type in fudge and then hit enter, it says you entered fudge. But if I type in Zelda, it says da -da -da -da. Now, also, you may have noticed that whenever after I enter something, like jug, it waits before it closes. Like it waits a little bit. Now, I'm gonna be showing you how all this functionality is done. The da 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 part was done by if you are a moderately intelligent being and uh, you probably should have made an intelligent guess that it does it using logic Do, because that's what the file name is called but if we edit the script here and we open this up we see let's just run through this short little program it says local input equals nil this is for the string getting the string and then it's gonna say print enter something and then we're going to do input is equal to io.read. You know, we we know what this means. But, here's the catch. Here's what's new. To to decide whether we want to say da-da-da-da or you entered and then input, we're going to use an if statement. But now, this is how this works. You do if, and then the logic you want to check, blah-blah-blah is blah-blah-blah to blah-blah-blah, then... You're going to run everything in here, and then, after that, you can stop it with an end, or, in this case, if this is not true, we want to do something else, uh, which is why I say else, and then, if, which means if this is not true, then it's going to do this, right, it's here, and then it's going to end. Now, let me explain what is actually inside this and how this works. So, you may see, here it says input equal io dot read but here it says input equal equal Zelda in quotes what this does this is the is equal to operator and this is the assignment operator never get these mixed up assignment operator puts values into something the uh, the is equal to operator checks if something is equal to each other in this case, we're checking if the variable input is equal to the string Zelda. And if it is, then we're going to print da 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 da. Alright? And if it's not, then we're going to print you entered and then your input. Now, this is how we do the, um, this is how we're going to do the, uh, the waiting, you know, to make it wait b before it, um, before it closes. We're going to make a new variable, local timer, and set it to os.time. And then we're going to repeat until, and then here's another one of these type of things, os.time is greater than timer plus one, which means after one second, it's going to go on. And we do the same thing here. Now, um, let me explain this repeat until blah blah blahness. Um, what repeat until does is it's a lot like an if statement sort of thing. You it, except it's a loop, which means it goes over and over and over until something makes it stop. In this case, in a repeat, <clears throat> if I can spell repeat until loop, what makes it stop <clears throat> is a um is a condition. So repeat until 2 is greater than 3. Now this is just going to be an infinite loop because 2 is never going to be greater than 3. Although this will not give you an error, it will run indefinitely. Uh, and then you can put whatever you want in here, like normal. If statements, print statements, anything you want inside of here. Um, assignments, new variables, all sorts of things, whatever you freaking want. <clears throat> There's also other types of loops, like a... Um, uh, here's a common one for like a menu or something uh, while 
true, do, and then end. And what this does is it goes on and on and on and on and on and on until something makes it stop, such as a break statement. What break does is it exits out of the current loop that it is in. So if I call break here, while it's in this loop, it's going to break out of the loop and go to the line after the loop. Um, that's what a break does. Um, and then also where this says while true do, you can also change this to some sort of condition, like while two equals two do this. You know, that works too. Alright, wait, 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 don't, don't ever do that, dude. Two is equal to two. Do that. And, um, also, as you can see, there's more than just, um, this, oh wait, 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 before I forget, there's one more type of loop you need to know, and this one is really common for a lot more advanced things, and this is called the for loop, and you start with four, and then you define a variable for here, like a counter variable, n equals, and then you can set it to whatever, but most of the time it starts at zero, and then you're gonna do comma, how how like how many times you want this loop to run let's say i want the loop to run 20 times and then we're going to do uh 4 n is equal to 0 comma 20 do and then end and this is going to do this 20 times unless a break is called so we can do we can like print or we can do something like this we can do local num is equal to 1 print to string num num is equal to num plus one and we should get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten blah 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 now i'm just going to for convenience sake i'm just going to comment out this using one of those giant thingamajangas and if we run this it's going to not work obviously because you know it is never supposed to work. Uh, why does it not work? It we just get like twenty ones. Yeah. Uh, make th just numb. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Boom. No. Of course. See, it even says no. Ah, <laughs> uh, right. -o. Righto, righto, righto. In actually, know what would be even better? Just print the variable to num uh, to string. That might actually be what my problem was. I don't know if I put to string or what. To string in. Just print in those times, and we get zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nineteen, all the way to twenty. So this actually runs twenty-one times if you include the zeroth time. Um, so that's a good thing to know. If you only want it to run 20 times, do n equals 1 to 20. Obviously. You know? And there's also more advanced things you can do with this. Like, um, you can make it go in, like, a different step. Like, make it go twice, like, two variables at a time. You just add a new parameter here. And we get 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, you know, it's counting by twos now. And it goes up to 19, because 20 is not valid for counting by 2s starting at 1. If we start at 0, though, we will get 0, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Um, you can also step backwards, and like negative 1, we can go backwards like a countdown. Um, equals 20 to 0. And then we get 20, 19, 18, 17, blah, 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 blah. You get the picture. So that can be done used for a lot of neat things. Um, and that should conclude what I wanted to talk about for loops. Now, after loops, um, there, this is not the only um, operation that you can use to check. As you can see, there's also a greater than. I'm going to list all of them. There's equal to, or all of them that I can think of. Um, equal to, not equal to, uh, greater than, oh hey kink, <laughs> greater than, less than, uh, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, 
Um, I believe that's it. I believe that's all of them. Yeah, there's uh, equal to, like I said, not equal to, uh, greater than, less than, greater, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and I believe that's all of them. At least that's all of the ones that you will need most of the time. I'm pretty sure that's all of them, though. Um, so I'm just going to turn that back to equals, save it, and, um, now there's one more thing I want to teach you before I end this lesson. And you see how this, this is like the exact same bit of code twice? Well, there's a better way than having to, ah, sorry if you keep hearing that popping, my mic is a little close, but there's a better way than having to, um, like type out the exact same code every single time you want to use it. Instead, we can use something in Lua called a function. Um, now, if we go up here to the top, and we, or I think it even works at the bottom, but most of the time they're defined at the top. We type in function, and then when we want to name the function, let's just name this um, wait, because we're waiting for however. Wait, uh, da da da, and then end, and then we can do local timer is equal to os.time. And then uh, we're going to do repeat until os.time is greater than timer plus one. Yep, just like that. And then we can replace this with weights. Just like that. Make sure you don't forget the curly, or they're not curly braces, but just the braces. And now we should be able to run this, and it's going to say into something. And we're going to enter like h, and it's going to actually die hang on a second ah debugging gotta love it wait uh... seventeen attempt to call global wait a nil value that's because i accidentally capitalized it never do that never ever 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 now i'm actually just gonna run this from here because it's easier to see how it works ugh you can do something ugh and then it closes and it should still work if i type zelda da 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 closes but now, there's also the new problem that arises. What if I don't want to wait for one second? What if I want to wait for 10 seconds? Or a half a second? Or 15 seconds? Whatever seconds you want to wait for. You could be like, alright, well, I can just, you know, copy this function over and over. And do like, wait 2, wait 3. You change this to 2 and 3, and you're like, yeah, that'll work. You know, and just do that all over the place. But no, 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 no. There's an even better way. We can do something called function parameters. And what we do here is inside of these braces here on the function line, you're going to want to type a variable name. And for this, we're going to want to type in wait time. And this variable will be how long we wait. And we're going to do timer plus wait time. And now, down here, where we call, wherever we call wait, we have to supply it with a wait time. So we're going to do one, because we only want to wait one second, right? Save it, and then run it, and enter something, JK. You enter JK. It's going to close. Enter something, Zelda. Da -da -da -da. And it's going to close. And you can put as many of these parameters as you like. Just be sure to separate them with commas, and then a space, and then the variable name. Like, hugs, space, kisses, space, ball busters. I don't know. You, you can name them whatever you want. Uh, um, and that's how that works. <clears throat> and you can just... <clears throat> excuse me. You can just run whatever code you want in these functions. So, I hope you enjoyed this lesson, um, through a course of logic and, um, you know, loops and functions. So, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave it a like, a favorite, and, um, be sure to comment, and subscribe if you have not already. And I'll see you guys next time.